Good morning, it's lovely to be back with you and uh, thank you for turning out on such a, a cold morning. It's um, it, quite rightly, it did take us a bit by surprise. It was six degrees when I got in my car this morning and quite chilly to what we're used to. But um, I do appreciate um, coming back here and you coming as, as well this morning. Let me just, uh, just pray if I may. Father, I just thank you for this opportunity to learn about what you are doing in your world. And Father, I just pray that you would speak to us this morning from your word and that we might see what is happening in our world so that we can be ready. In Jesus' name, amen. Okay, uh, for those of you who uh, don't know me, um, my name is Steve Lloyd. I, I, I'm a church pastor in Bedfordshire and uh, I also uh, run... Um, a ministry called Bible Prophecy Foundation. Uh, and that foundation uh, aims to provide people with information that can prepare them for what I believe is the, the near coming of the Lord and certainly uh, as a pre tribber uh, the rapture of, of the church. Um, so in a sense, what we're going to do this morning is not a Bible study, but a looking at some scripture and seeing what's going on in the world so that we can see what is coming and that we can prepare for what is coming. But before I go there, I just feel that there's a need to give a bit of a, uh, a message to people out there because of what's going on with the, you know, the death of our Queen uh, and the King coming. Because I've, I've seen a lot of things going on on Facebook from different Christians arguing the point of was the Queen a Christian or she's not a Christian and all of those things. I don't think it does us as church any good at all to start doing this on Facebook. You may have your own opinions of where she may be at this time and uh, we know uh, that she said certain things in certain addresses that would certainly make us feel that she knew the gospel. There are other things that she did in, in her role as queen that go against some of that and so really actually we don't know where she stands and I think it's, it's, it can be wrong of us and certainly uh, out of something that we shouldn't be doing to, to basically just get involved in talk for the sake of talk. You know where she is is down to, to the Lord uh, and her decision regarding him of course. Um, and, and whether or not we're looking forward to uh, King Charles III, we know that he has um, World Economic Forum um, connections, quite big connections, uh, and therefore I think with him in charge we may find ourselves in a very different position to when, what we did with the Queen. But the fact is, that, that remains, that in Romans chapter 13 we read that God puts people in power and authority, and whether we like her or don't like her, you know, whatever it is, or him, God put her there and he's now brought her reign to an end and now he's put Charles there and he will do with Charles what he wants. Okay, so we, we have to look at it from that point of view, I believe. So um, let's not get embroiled with things on Facebook, which, uh, as Paul would say, is just really gossip, if I might say that. And I hope you won't be upset by me saying that, but I just feel that there is a need to... Um, to stop doing that as, as Christians. It doesn't do uh, any of us any good whatsoever. The other thing I'd just like to say before I start is um, uh, thank you for those that have, have sent me gifts through uh, the bank account. I haven't got a clue who people are and I've got no way of thanking you. So I have to say that today, that if you've, if you've sent me a gift in the past when I last come, or still are, because there are some that have set up, it would seem, a monthly amount, and I'm very grateful to that. Thank you so much. So thank you for, for all your gifts in, in that respect. Um, good. Right, that's that bit out of the way, as you might say. Let's get on to the subject um, in hand. Um, you may be one of these people, I don't know, but there are many people in the country and around the world at the moment who have no idea how to use a computer. We've got two people sitting here looking at them at the moment, but we don't know whether they know what they're doing or not. <laughs> and sometimes we're in front of the computer and we haven't got a clue what we're doing or not. But the, the fact is that uh, we've, we've, we've all got used to the fact that computers are taking over and we have online access to um, our bank accounts and all of those things. Um, 
And of course, many of us like to use cash still, uh, but there, there seems to be a war on cash at the moment. And uh, so what I'm seeing around me today in the world in which we live is, is a push, if you like, of, of the devil towards this the mark of the beast and everything that's coming, and cash has got a lot to do with it. Um, we're going to spend some time basically looking at the coming cashless society. Everything is going digital, but I think the main thing that will affect us the most is a cashless society. Now, you might think, well, it won't really make a lot of difference to me, but I can assure you it will. It's going to make a very big difference to, to all of us, I think. But uh, Revelation 13 talks about this mark of the beast and forcing it upon us. And it says, without this mark, you will not be able to buy or sell. Now, whatever your background is as to whether you're pre-trib, mid-trib, post-trib, in terms of whether you go through the tribulation or not, let's forget that for a moment. If we are here, you will go through this and you may have a decision to, to make. But in the run-up to the tribulation coming, there may also be decisions to, for us to make in terms of what we take on uh, as believers. So we're going to look at th um, three sort of areas, if you like, today. I'm going to set the, the biblical scene, if you like, for what is going to be the ultimate control over your money and your life. Uh, you'll be surprised at how those two are linked. Uh, we're going to look at what's happening in the world in terms of getting rid of cash or trying to replace it with uh, digital currency. That's the main topic we'll look at. We'll probably go off on, onto a couple of other things as well. And then we're going to ask the question at the end of how will all of this affect you? Because it's important to, to have an understanding of what's this going to do to my life? How will this affect my life? What sort of decisions may I need to make? Now, I'm not a finance person, OK? I've never been into finance. Uh, I don't understand financial markets. I see a graph that goes up and down all the time, and they tell me that the FTSE goes up one day, comes down the next. I haven't got a clue what that means. Uh, it certainly doesn't affect me in that re res respect. But I do like to keep my eyes and ears open as to what's happening in, the, in these areas and research these various topics. Um, and so I would consider myself an awake person today. Uh, that's a term that's come about over the last two years, I think, isn't it? Um, is whether we're awake or not. Um, perhaps we all here are, uh, are awake today, I don't know. But I hope that through the Bible we can see uh, where the end game is going. Now, I wanted to just briefly read uh, um, a couple of verses from 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, which uh, is a well-known bit that we turn to when we're looking at uh, the subject of the rapture, not that we're going to look at that. Um, but I just want to, to uh, read really verses 17 and 18 of chapter 4, 1 Thessalonians. It says, After that, uh, we who are still alive and are left will be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air, and so we will be with the Lord forever. Therefore, encourage each other with these words. This may be a little bit of a doom and gloom sort of message as to where we're going, but we have something to look forward to. If you are a believer in Christ, then you are going to be with the Lord forever. And we need to encourage each other with these words. Uh, we also must encourage uh, each other with the fact that whatever is happening in this world, okay, that's going towards the beast system and all the rest, is God's plan. Right? This is not the devil's plan. The devil might be carrying it out, but this is God's plan. Okay? And uh, so we must remember that and be encouraged by that. Now, as we go forward, Mr Kissinger, who we don't hear very much of these days, but he once said, who controls the food supply controls the people. Who controls the energy can control whole continents. Who controls money controls the world. And we're seeing all three of those things being controlled quite, uh, quite well, shall we say, at this moment in time. Back in 1815, a man called Nathan Mayer Rothschild, uh, who controlled the Bank of England, boldly declared, I care not what puppet is placed upon the throne of England to rule the empire on which the sun never sets. The man who controls Britain's money supply controls the British empire. And I control the British money supply. 
this became actually the Rothschild sort of family mantra, that they control the world by controlling the world's money supply. And that is so true. So it doesn't matter whether we have a queen on the throne or now a king, that king will have to bow down to those who own the money and do his told, if you like. So we may see a king that is, uh, is, speaks the right things and does the right things, certainly to us, but he is being controlled by people in the background. So what we're seeing today is the control of food. Um, we're seeing the control of energy and we are seeing the control of our money. And regardless of how you feel about money, you will have no control over whether or not it is switched off or taken out of supply. It don't matter how much you, the post office tells us that there's been a big surge in the use of cash, uh, or how much cash you might have and how much you want to use cash, when they decide to say enough is enough, you will not be able to do anything about it. But we'll come on to that uh, in, a, in a little while. So we live in a world now that has lived in fear uh, because of COVID. Uh, and now we're looking at uh, another set of fear, which is to do with the possibility of shoot food shortages. And they put that down to the Ukrainian-Russian war. Well, I don't think so. I think there's something else there, but we'll go into that a little more. Um, which may result in the rationing of foodstuffs. And of course, as soon as on the news they mention this word rationing or shortages, you all go out to the shops and you buy things, don't you? And that causes a bigger problem, which is what happened last time. Um, so that, you know, that's where we are. But we, we are being prepared for the next stage. COVID was a preparation game, if you like, for what is to come. Uh, and that, that will be the control of your money and the control of what you are allowed to buy or not to buy. Um, so, let's set the biblical scene for a system that will ultimately control your money and your life. In Revelation chapter 13, I want to read verses 11 to 18, um, because this is the, the passage of, of Scripture that we all know so well, uh, just to sort of um, centralise our thoughts uh, on this. So verse 11 of Revelation 13 says, Then I saw a second beast coming out of the earth. It had two horns like a lamb, but it spoke like a dragon. It exercised all the authority of the first beast on its behalf and made the earth and its inhabitants worship the first beast whose fatal wound had been healed. And it performed great signs, even causing fire to come down from heaven to the earth in full view of the people. Because of the signs it was given power to perform on behalf of the first beast, it deceived the inhabitants of the earth. It ordered them to set up an image in honour of the beast who was wounded by the sword and yet lived. The second beast was given power to give breath to the image of the first beast so that the image could speak and cause all who refused to worship the image to be killed. It also forced all people, great and small, rich and poor, free and slave, to receive a mark on their right hands or on their foreheads, so that they could not buy or sell unless they had the mark, which is the name of the beast or the number of its name. This calls for wisdom. Let the person who has insight calculate the number of the beast, for it is the number of a man. That number is 666. Uh, we could go further into other scriptures if we had the time, but we cannot do so today. The Revelation, of course, is full of images, uh, and those images can be a little bit hard to understand. But uh, we, we know that the beast is, is a ferocious um, animal, if you like, and we, we get here uh, that we could get the easy meaning that it, it's talking about something like a ferocious lion, but of course it's not. This word is being used to describe something that is so terrible. And in this case, this beast is a harsh control system. It will have a head, of course, which will be the Antichrist, but it is basically going to be a system, an Antichrist system. So let's focus on, on the part which says he will force all people, great and small, to receive the mark. Now, I don't believe there's any ambiguity here. It's quite clear on what it says. All people will be forced at some stage 
uh, to have it, no matter who they are, uh, and they will receive it on, on their right hand or on their foreheads. Now, I know in the past people have spoken about the, the vaccinations and said, oh, this is the mark of the beast. It's not, okay? For one thing, I've never seen anyone injected in the right hand or in the forehead. That's me being humorous. But the fact is, it, it's not going to be a vaccination. The vaccinations did have um, uh, a, a reason to be given, if you like, and that is partly to do with control and to make sure you go along with the plan. Uh, and so many people did. But I don't want to get into to vaccinations in that run. But the vaccination, in a sense, is a forerunner to what is coming. Because what it did is it got you in such fear uh, of catching something that you wanted to do something about it and you did as you were told. There was a psychological element to this as well. And so it's a, it's a bit of a forerunner, really, of to, to see how well you would obey government. Uh, or whoever it is that's in, in control. Now, you might uh, say, well, you know, the, the mark is nothing much, really. Uh, I've heard people sort of say, well, it's only a mark. Well, whether it's a tattoo, whether it's a barcode, whatever it might be, this mark is something that's going to change your life. You see, because if, if you look at what the Bible says, and if you go to Revelation chapter 14, verses 9 and 10, uh, it talks about a third angel. And it says, a third angel followed them and said in a loud voice, if anyone worships the beast and its image and receives its mark on their forehead, forehead or on their hand, they too will drink the wine of God's fury, which has been poured full strength into the cup of his wrath. They will be tormented with burning sulphur in the presence of the holy angels and of the lamb. If you take the mark, it's over you will spend eternity in hell. All right, I can't be more straightforward than that, but that's exactly what scripture is saying here. So if you think the mark is just, well, it's just, a, it's okay. We're, you know, we can go along with it. Um, we, we can therefore live, we can buy and sell. You are giving up eternity in the presence of God. It's something that I would, just don't do it. If you find yourself in that position, don't do it. The Bible also, of course, says that salvation is through a personal relationship with Jesus Christ. And it's in him alone that we can be saved. Eternal life is only possible through repentance of our sins, through turning away from our sinful life and turning to Christ and asking for his forgiveness. And I just want to emphasise the point about repentance. We live in a world today that looks at repentance as something quite easy. Yeah, I've repented of my sin, Lord, and now I'm going to go back to doing what I was doing. That is not repentance. Repentance means that you turn from that sin and you walk a different way. Whatever it was that you were doing in the past, you need to turn away from and you walk towards Christ and with Christ. That's what true repentance is. It's not saying, I'm sorry, Lord, and then carrying on as you were. I think there's a lot of people in the church who think that at this moment in time and they're going to find themselves in a very bad position. So the Bible shows us that there's going to be a system, a system that will take away our normal way of living. It will take away cash, uh, I believe, uh, and it will be placed either in or on our body. It depends what version you've got because some versions will say in your body and the others will say on. Uh, depends what you have but that's where it will be. So that's, the scripture speaks very clearly of this coming system. So what is happening around the world today in terms of getting rid of cash and replacing it with a digital currency? Everything is going digital now, as you know. Uh, everything can be done online just about now. You name it, it's going digital. And when currency goes digital, that's when we've really got to, to worry. So some of us might say, well, replacing cash is inevitable. And perhaps the coming of a new king might say for the Bank of England, well, let's not print any more money. You know, let's not waste money printing money, even though they print it all the time. Um, let's go digital. I mean, that could be something that happens. I, I don't know. Um, we, will, we will see, of course. But the reason that uh, they were put forward for wanting to go digital with currency is uh, the fact that, of course, fraud is rife, um, theft is rife, and digital currency can do away with that. 
they always put over the good points first, don't they? I noticed that as I was coming here on the train. There are CCTV cameras on the tube for your safety. So we got, yeah, of course, you know, I did all right without them before, but now it's for my safety. This is the same thing. Everything that they will do will be for your benefit and your safety. Uh, and so, of course, if we can do away with the theft of cash, if we can do away with someone being robbed on the street, that is good. Well, it is good, actually. I mean, you don't want people being robbed. So if we do away with cash, those people won't do that anymore. Um, and digital currency is also very easily traceable. So even if you try and fraud someone online, they can still detect where it is. It has its own footprint. Uh, and so this is what makes it so uh, good, if you like, for the governments. They know exactly where the currency is at any one time. So replacing cash with a digital system, of course, would be OK with the right government. If you had a, a, a good, righteous government, it would work OK because they wouldn't be wanting to do anything with you or with it. But we don't live in a world like that. We live in a very dark world, as I was saying beforehand, that's getting darker all the time. And um, we now see, of course, that the one world government is, is well and truly on the cards and uh, these elite people, as, as call them, I, I call them parasites myself, but, but elite people uh, want to control you in every way that they can. Uh, so if the one, when the one world government comes in, uh, that will be run by these few rich elites, uh, Illuminati, call them what you will, um, They've, they've infiltrated just about every system there is. The UN is, is full of these people. The World Health Organization is full of these people. And, of course, um, the World Economic Forum is well established now with all of these people. And um, I think, in my opinion, the World Economic Forum has certainly focused itself um, on getting this digital currency in, and, and dealing with those things. Now... Klaus Schwab, as you, you may have come across him, uh, who's written lots of books and um, stands out there now with all his garb on and, and promoting all of these things as though, well, it's going to happen. And, and he's right, of course, it is going to happen because he has infiltrated just about every government of the world and he's got his people in place and he boasts about this. He truly boasts about this. Uh, King Charles is one of them. You know, uh, Liz Trust is a member of the WEF as well. So, uh, and even Rishi Sunak. So it didn't matter which one we got, we were getting a puppet of the WEF uh, in power. So um, we, we will see that no matter how Liz Trust does things, there'll be someone controlling her strings uh, behind her. Interesting that, you know, uh, with electricity prices and gas prices going up, that the first thing that she did, having, we've spent a couple of months being terrified of the fact that our gas and electric bills were going to go from, I don't know, was it about, let's say, £700 a year, uh, £800 a year if you're careful, something like that, going to shoot up now, and I think the last uh, fear thing was £7,500 it was going to be uh, eventually, and everyone's really, whoa, you know, and then all of a sudden, Liz, Liz Trust comes in and says, we're going to cap it at two and a half thousand. And everyone's going, oh, thank goodness for that. We're all right, we're saved. The fact that your gas and electric bill has still almost trebled, and yet we are thankful that it hasn't gone as high as it is, you know. So, uh, you know, they're working their, their things, if you like. But if you know anything about the World Economic Forum and, and uh, the Great Reset Goals... Um, they have a number of goals, and the last two goals on their list is a cashless society and a universal income. And those two are going to be very much linked together, I believe. So a, a cashless society and a universal income. Um, the move against cash, of course, got a very good boost when the pandemic come, across, come along. Because there were so many during the pandemics that refused to accept cash, all because China decided that they were going to clean their cash uh, as it came into the banks because of the possibility of spreading COVID. And everyone locked onto that and went, oh, it's a way of spreading COVID. And so therefore, um, they, they go along with it. And we, we've, we've had this thing ever since. No one ever picks up on the fact that everyone's touching the cash, you know, the thing where you put your card in. No one looks at that and goes, well, hang on a minute, we're all touching that. 
you know. But anyway, there you go. Um, so anyway, th this is quickly caught on and it is gaining momentum. There's certain shops you'll go in that will say it's uh, card only now and they won't do away, they won't use cash. Um, so cash in a sense got a bit of a boot for a couple of years out the door. You know, it, it was quite amazing as well that when, when that um, COVID came along, that Amazon just happened to have, just happened to have a brand new fleet of vehicles ready and waiting to do even more online shopping. Did you notice that? It was already there. I think it's quite interesting. Someone obviously tipped him off, didn't they? Um, it, so that you could start spending on your credit card. I mean, you hadn't got anything else to do for two years. You might as well, I suppose, might you? Um, but anyway, um, I, I want to emphasise uh, the point that although cash is making a bit of a resurgence at the moment, there are a lot of people out there that are determined to continue using cash. Um, you know, when they're ready, when the elite people are ready, they will stop it and there'll be nothing that you can do uh, about it. So you're going to find if, if you've got, say, a thousand pounds out of the bank just in case and you put it under your mattress, um, it ain't going to do you any good once this all collapses because your mattress, you know, it, it just won't be no good for you. Um, but we'll come on to that a bit later on. Um, so we'll see where we go with that. Um, but when we start talking about a replacement for cash, our thoughts, I think, will probably go straight away to something like Bitcoin, we've heard of Bitcoin probably, uh, or some other cryptocurrency uh, that, that lose, use this thing called blockchain technology. Now again, I, I'm, I'm not into there near thing. I don't know quite what blockchain technology is, but it's the system that they use for all of this, these um, new currencies. But you know, it was only a couple of years ago that certain things were being said about Bitcoin, that Bitcoin was no good. In fact, Warren Buffett, You've probably heard that name. Uh, he, he either owns or is a big stakeholder in Yahoo Finance. And he said that Bitcoin was, back in 2018, rat poison. That's how he looked upon it. It's rat poison. And yet in 2022, he invested over a billion dollars in a crypto-friendly bank called Nubank. So he's had a change of mind. I wonder why. JP Morgan's CEO, which is a, a Jamie Dimon, I think that's how you pronounce it, back in 2017, he said that he would fire a trader in a second if they started trading in Bitcoin. Okay, yet in 2021, uh, they were the first major bank to offer cryptocurrencies. Interesting. Goldman Sachs boss in 2017 said that Bitcoin was a vehicle for fraudsters. Yet now they also trade in cryptocurrencies. Perhaps they're the biggest fraudsters of all. Um, in December 21, the Guardian reported that the Bank of England said that Bitcoin could become worthless. Not interested in it, could become worthless. And yet in March 2022, that's only a few months ago, the Bank of England is now aspiring to be the leader in cryptocurrencies and assets. They're all changing their tune. The Bank of England says that at the moment, anyway, they want to retain cash alongside cryptocurrencies. But don't listen to what they say, look at what they do. That's the important thing, because they will tell you one thing and do another. We know that our government is a government of U-turns and misinformation. Um, they'll miss Boris on that one, because he was so good at it. But uh, anyway, that will not change. But you see, companies, these big companies like Apple and Tesla, Microsoft, Amazon, they're all introducing cryptocurrencies. That's where this is going, as a means of payment for their products. In fact, CBS News said that Bitcoin alone had produced 100,000 Bitcoin millionaires. See, everyone's trying to get in on it. And if you get in it at the right point, you can make a lot of money or a lot of Bitcoins, whichever way you look at it. Um, you know, so it seems, and, and don't take the notice of the fact that at the moment cryptocurrencies are having a bit of a wobble. They won't wobble for too long. This is where this is going. So if this is where it's going uh, and the Bank of England wants to do more, they want to bring in what's called central banking digital currencies. Okay, so we've got a lot of cryptocurrencies about at the moment. 
uh, but they want to bring in central bank cryptocurrencies, which means that if they do bring those in, what are the other banks going to do? They're, they're, they're almost getting rid of high street banks because there won't be a need for them. Because if everything goes digital and they have their own currency, why do we need Midlands, Lloyds and all the rest of it? So they're, they're looking at the moment to see where do they fit in um, in all of these big changes. So how does the WEF, the World Economic Forum, um, see the financial system in the future? Uh, well, we've just seen that two of their goals are that it will be cashless and it will be linked um, to this universal income. But Klaus Schwab says in his book, The Great Narrative, he says this, this is how he begins. It is already clear that the COVID-19 crisis was, has put into motion momentous changes that will unfold in a multifaceted fashion. Some of these changes were already apparent prior to the crisis, but have been accelerated. Yeah, surprise that, uh, by the pandemic. Among them are the acceleration of automation and innovation, rising inequalities, the growing power of tech and surveillance, the rising rivalry between the United States and China, partial retreat from globalisation, the economic paradigm shift, and an increasingly fractious geopolitical landscape, all of which they have obviously manufactured in some way. But other changes uh, are now in the offing that go beyond the mere acceleration of pre-existing trends, including a handful that would have seemed inconceivable before COVID-19 struck. That's why you've been had your, your mentality changed a little bit. The reconsideration of our social priorities, uh, as expressed notably in the Great Resignation phenomenon, more radical welfare and taxation measures, new forms of state intervention, the rising appeal of well-being policies and a new appreciation of nature. These are just a few examples of the new systematic changes that will grow in relevance. And so what is staying there is you're going to see more state intervention. You're going to see more different well-being policies. They've got to put them in place because a lot of people are going to be put out of work when currency goes. And uh, appreciation of nature. There we go. Climate change is involved again here uh, as well. And so the pandemic was actually designed really to bring about some of these changes to make these things go forward. He actually goes on to say, as we will see, solutions to the major challenges we face do exist and are within grasp but they will require, require a great deal of innovation and dramatic changes in our economies and societies, as well as in the institutions, laws and rules that govern them. Our life habits and modes of consumption will also need to change drastically. He's basically telling us how we're going to live in the future. Now, these are the words from a self-appointed man who seems to have the world's leadership in his pocket and wants to change everything about the way we live. The major lead, of course, will be getting climate change sorted. You know, the fear that our planet will destroy itself because we're making too much CO2. That is the biggest con that was ever put forward. All right, if you believe climate change, the way they're putting it across, it's wrong. In fact, I was reading something just this morning that said our world is actually going through one of the coolest periods uh, over the last few thousand years. And that's what the way God made it, of course, didn't it? it? It goes on a cycle. Sometimes it goes up a little bit, sometimes it goes down a little bit. Uh, a bit like the ozone layer, when we suddenly found that there was a hole in the ozone. <gasps> the air will escape. Uh, and we all panicked over that, of course we suddenly found it was a natural phenomenon. It opened and it closed. Why? Because God made it to regulate things. And that's the way it is. But they are using this as a means to get their way. I agree that we should look after our planet. Absolutely. You know, let's not uh, take it for granted. Uh, but what they're putting forward is a load of old baloney. Uh, if you research the science you'll see, as I say, that the earth goes through these cycles. And this is just another pandemic of fear. But the goal of the Great Reset, i.e. the New World Order, uh, because they're both linked, is to destroy everything that you are familiar with and replace it by controlling what you can and cannot do. 
And so what they want to bring in is the central bank currencies which are programmable. Now, what do I mean by programmable? Well, this, this is, uh, I've got a copy that you can take away with you. There is very much a concern, or there was amongst MPs, that um, the Bank of England wants to be, one, a world leader in cryptocurrencies, but making it so that it was programmable. And this is what it actually said. The Bank of England, uh, this is the headline rather, tells ministers to intervene on digital currency programming, digital cash, they were worried that digital cash could be programmed to ensure that it's only spent on essentials or goods which an employer or the government deems to be sensible. Can you see where that is going? Your employer can give you your money at the end of the week or the month, but then tell you what you can and can't spend it on. And the government will do the same. I noticed there was a report this morning uh, about obesity. Obesity apparently uh, makes you more susceptible to COVID. There has to be a link there, don't they? But it does. And so therefore the next thing will probably be, if this comes in, that they will program it. That if you are obese, no McDonald's for you. Or, or certain foods will not be on the menu. Now you might think that this is pie in the sky, but it's not. Uh, because that's where it is, and I've got the copies of what they were planning or are planning to do. Uh, and Rishi Sunak, uh, had, had he stayed as Chancellor, uh, would have carried this through. Well, whoever's the new Chancellor, and I can't think of his name, but anyway, it doesn't matter, uh, they're gonna, they will introduce it. It's coming. So we'll have, a, we'll have that. And then the secondly, of course, it's going to be um, linked with a new thing that will come in, which is universal income. Now, that's a, a, something that's been bandied about over the last few years. Uh, they've been messing about with people's incomes and things, especially those on, on benefits. And, and this word universal income has been bandied about. In fact, uh, Nicola Sturgeon said last year, back in September, that she vowed to introduce rent controls, expand free health care and lay the groundwork for a universal basic income. Uh, and it's the same thing that's going on in America. Uh, and so she set out her uh, agenda um, for Scotland on that. Elon Musk has said that there is a pretty good chance that automation will entirely replace workers in the future, meaning governments will have to make up for the lost wages by paying people a universal income. OK, so and of course, the World Economic Forum, uh, Forum are well behind this and want to implement this. So they suddenly come up with a groundbreaking study in the US uh, last year, I think it was, where three economists showed that it was cheaper to have a basic universal income, although they call it in America a guarantee, uh, than it was to continue the system in place that was now being used to combat crime, poverty and the like by paying you different things. So, of course, there you go. It's cheaper for them to do it this way, so we will go down that, that road. Uh, there's a man called Rutger Bregman. Um, he talks a lot on universal incomes, uh, and he, he's basically said, it is not a means for laziness, it is a means to control. And that is so true. He goes on to say, uh, in a book that he's wrote, and he's, the, he's the author of a book called Utopia for Realists, and he says at the end of the book, Therefore, I would like to propose that we call this variant simply what it is, basic security. A trampoline that you can always fall back on, whatever else happens. One thing is certain, the time for philosophising is past. Every milestone of civilization begins with a crackpot idea, once dismissed as unreasonable and unrealistic. But there comes a time when utopian dreams become ripe enough to turn them into real world policy. For basic income, that time is now. So there is a big shift going on here uh, to bring together digital currency that will wipe out all your cash, will wipe out all your control on what you, you can spend things on and um, bring in this uh, income, if you like, income support, whatever you want to call it, that gives you the money, which is why they say you won't own anything, but you will be happy. I mean, uh, no disrespect to any young people here, but young people growing up today, you know, if you say, don't worry, when you leave school, the government will support you in everything you want to do, this will be... 
you're going to rub your hands and say, well, thank you very much. What a great idea. So that's where this is going. Digital cash is going to change your life. Digital cash. Digital currency. When cash is gone, think of all the things you use cash for now. You know, little Johnny, when it's his birthday, you give him a tenner. Or if you're really generous, you might give him 20. Uh, but you won't be able to do that anymore. You know, when you've got that, that friend around the corner that looks after your car and he services it cheap for you and he, you know, just give me 50 quid cash, you know, you won't be able to do that anymore. There'll be lots of things that will change. More than you actually realise at this very moment. Not only that, when you think about it, if, if when this system comes in and you have to have your credit card or however it's going to be, what are you going to do when you go to the railway station, for instance, to get a train ticket and you haven't done what the government want and you get there and it says you can't travel? If you think that this is being made up, go to China. It's exactly how it works in China. In China, if you have friends who are undesirable, it affects you. If you speak out against the government, it affects you. And do you notice that there is a, a big... Um, they're bringing back in this, the, the, your point score. Um, what's the word? Thank you. So, yeah, the credit score. You know, they're bringing that back in. Because that's going to take place. And if you haven't got the right credit score, you ain't doing anything until you tow the line. This is where this is going. Um, and, and you might think, well, yeah, that's a bit far-fetched, Steve. But um, let me just tell you that, uh, I don't know whether you've heard of this man, Jim Rickards uh, was a very highly um, guy high up in the, with the CIA and he used to advise the CIA on for financial matters and, it, and he's quite a financial forecaster. He's got a lot of things right when it comes to finance. And he actually came out the other day. Now, I have to say, I, I'm not taking this with a pinch of salt, but... We never know whether we're being set up or not, do we? So we've got to be a bit careful. But he came out and said the other day that C-Day, as they call it in America, cashless day, is December the 13th this year. December the 13th this year. If, if that were to happen, if, if he is right and currency is programmable, can you think of the chaos that's going to occur in America and how people are going to be screaming in the streets because they can't buy anything, they can't do anything, they won't be able to buy what they want, they won't be able to travel where they want. Can you imagine going to the gas station uh, and filling up your, your car with, say, £50 worth of petrol, and the, the, the cashier says to you, uh, I'm sorry, but you've reached your limit for this month, you can't have any more. Do you know what I mean? They're the sort of controls that you might think about at the moment that could come in. And if you think I'm really joking, um, I don't know whether any of you have got smart meters. Uh, I've, keep away from smart meters, all right? <laughs> in America, of course, uh, again, I think it's Indianapolis. Um, they, they went, because of the weather changing, they went in a, in a particular town to, to sort of turn their meters down or up or whatever. And a message appeared saying, you can't do it. We're, we've locked it from what, this time to that time, at a certain level. <coughs> and it told them that they'd enrolled in a programme which they knew nothing about. Now, can you imagine that? It's 20 degrees below zero, and they're telling you you can't have your heating on. And they can actually turn it off. You might think, again, that's pie in the sky, but a smart meter can do that. It can do that. Uh, not only that, the Swiss have just introduced the law, haven't they? That if you turn your heating above 19 degrees, you can spend three years in prison. Three years in prison for just turning it up to 20. Well, put another coat on, you'll be safer, won't you? But that's how silly these things are getting, if you like, and how controlling these things are, are getting. Other digital things that are coming in, we've, we've just, they've just passed the uh, elections bill that comes into force, I think it's next year, that requires everyone to have some sort of photo ID or they can't vote. There are a lot of people that haven't got a photo ID. You may be one of those lucky people that's still got an old driving licence. You know, and you're hanging on to it for dear life because it's old school. That's going to have to go. You're going to have to get something else or they're going to bring in ID cards, which you know, we've always fought against, but um, these things are coming. The new police and crimes bill that's now been passed onto law will stop you making noisy protests. 
In fact, it does curb you from protest in almost at all. Any mass gathering will, will totally be uh, null and void. If you meet with more than one other person, uh, you know, you could find yourself being arrested. It, that's how bad, I'm not exaggerating these things. Go and look it up for yourselves because it, it's, it's true what's going on there. So it comes on to my last point, which is how can we prepare for this? How can we prepare for this? Well, I've come up with a short answer is, well, give me all your money now and I'll, and I'll deal with it. Um, but actually, it's a hard thing to answer. It is a real hard thing to answer because whatever you can do will be fairly short-lived. And, and you've got to look at this in a sort of long term. Um, the laws are already in place. Um, things have gone into, as I've just said, there, there are things in the bank that you probably, I don't know whether you know that the bank can legally confiscate your money. They can take it away at a moment's notice. If there suddenly becomes a run on the pound type thing and people start going, they will shut you down. They will shut ATMs down. They can do that legally. But where does that leave you? It leaves you with nothing. Absolutely nothing. What are you going to do? They say that your money is protected up to, up to £80,000. But look into that. The government has not got enough money to pay us all for what we would lose. In fact, it wouldn't pay probably this room the amount of... You know, it's such a small amount that they've set aside for this that it, won't, it would never work. So again, you know, they're lying to us in, in that respect. But I think we are going to see a national collapse in our banking and it will be brought about by the elite people when they're ready. When everything else is in place, uh, they will do that. And so there are those that I know are saying, well, I'm going to put my, my money into more tangible, I'm going to buy gold and silver. Well, that's OK, but you've only got a certain amount of gold and silver that you can buy. And what are you going to do when that runs out? When you've bartered it away because of, of, of whatever, you know? What are you going to do when... The, the smart meter in your house turns your electric and your gas off. You're suddenly left with very little. So can we do anything about it? Well, some will stockpile food. Uh, but again, you know, if you want to get a three-month supply of food in, that's a fair amount of food. And where are you going to keep it? And how are you going to stop others getting it? Because you see, we live in a world now that when, when A knows that B's got something, A will devise a plan to go and get it from B. Do you know what I mean? As soon as they know that you've got something that they want, they'll knock your door down and they will come and get it. That's the way, unfortunately, that civilization is working at the moment. We are in a very dark time. I'm not saying it's impossible to prepare, but it's very difficult to prepare long term. You might be able to, uh, you know, a few weeks... Uh, I, I did look into this, you know, the best food to get is dried food. Dried food can last for 25 years, but in order to be able to dry your food, you need a, a proper dryer that costs about £4,000. So unless you're all going to club together, it ain't going to work. So we're going to be in a bit of a position here, aren't we? As I say, I'm not saying it's, it's impossible to prepare, but it is very difficult. And I haven't got answers, because I've been thinking about this quite a lot. You know, how can I do this? How can I do that? You see, I went and bought a generator the other day, but not for this reason. <laughs> I've, got, I've been given an allotment, and it's down the road, and I've got an electric rotavator, and I needed something to power the rotavator, so I bought this little generator. And I suddenly thought, oh, I'll be all right now, won't I, if, if the electric goes off. But what about petrol? You know, if, if the electric's gone off, then the petrol pumps won't work, so I won't be able to get no petrol, so therefore, it ain't going to work for very long, is it? See, eventually, they get you. They get you. So what are you going to put your hope in? You know, um, there is only one hope, and that is the Lord Jesus Christ. Um, you know... It's only trusting in him. We know through scripture that God has fed people with ravens and, and provided quail and manna in the desert. We know he can do it. Sometimes he waits till the last minute to do it. But we have to remember that he's a God that's always on time. Um, so we need to trust him. 
We need to know him as Lord and Saviour. We need to know uh, what he wants us to do in these, these situations. And the main thing he wants us to do is to trust him. Look to him. Last question is, when will this happen? When's this going to happen? Well, again, that's another hard question because, uh, you know, we're, we're getting things together now that will actually come together as what I would call the perfect storm. You know, with the way things are going. Um, governments are producing their own statistics about injections and all sorts of things and getting the fear going. Um, you know, I, I call the pandemic actually the start of the or the commencement of Operation Mark of the Beast because I think that's where it really started and, and we're now going to go through a series of things. We've got climate change that's becoming the next mantra and uh, we've got to do all these things to save our planet and it is ridiculous the, the, the way they want us to reduce. I'll talk a bit about electric cars in the next session but you know they've even come out with the fact that if by 2030 I think it is everything's got to be electric including Royal Navy ships, all right? Royal Navy ships have got to become electric. I mean, we can't even get the new um, aircraft carrier to work properly, can we? And that's got normal stuff on it. But can you just imagine what will happen if in 2030 there has been no uh, motor, electric type motor found to propel our warships? The They're going to have... The batteries are the problem. Sorry? The batteries. The batteries, ab absolutely. But they're going to have to go into dry dock until we get something electrical. That's how stupid they're looking at this. So you can see Putin's going to come across and go, well, I'll still burn the oil and I'll attack. <laughs> you know, I saw a little caption the other day. You might have saw it on Facebook. Uh, a fire, fire control operator saying to this lady, I know your house is burning down, uh, Mrs. So-and-so, but the electric fire engine is still charging. <laughs> you know... We're, we're getting ourselves into that with climate change. That's, you know. And then, of course, the, the food shortage situation, which has been deliberately caused uh, by these New World Order um, people. Let me give you a couple of examples of that. In America, there has been a huge amount now. The, the last count I counted, there was over 14 major food manufacturing outlets or distribution plants in America that had suddenly burnt down. Suddenly burnt down. Now, as an ex-firefighter, I find that extremely stra strange, that that seems... But, of course, what it's doing is it's interrupting the supply of food and the production of food. Do you remember we had the total lockdown of Shanghai a few months ago, where they, because of wanting to get it down to zero COVID, which you were never going to do, they locked everything down, including the port of Shanghai. And if you saw the radar pictures from wherever they took it from, that all of the amount of thousands of ships out in the harbour waiting to get into Shanghai. Everything, it seems, goes through Shanghai. Now, they said that that was going to take months to unravel. And it probably will. If you're still waiting for something from China at this moment, it's probably stuck in one of them boats. And then, of course, we get, we get the port shut. Up. Is it Felix, though? Is the port shut? You know, well, that was strange, wasn't it? And now that's going to stop things coming into the country. Do you not smell a bit of a rat going on here? Uh, you know, it doesn't take much to... And, and I'm not a conspiracy theorist. I'm looking at what I see in front of me uh, as, as happening. The war in Ukraine has put a heavy uh, burden, if you like, on wheat and flour, hasn't it? You know, uh, because those two countries are major exp exporters of, 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 of wheat and so on. And Putin's going to make sure that his country has its wheat. Um, uh, and the Ukraine's wheat, it seems, can't get out, although they have allowed a few ships out now. But did you notice that the one ship that they did allow out that went to um, somewhere off the coast of Accra and the head of the World Health Organization was there to greet it? I thought, yeah, this is staged, really. Uh, and we haven't heard anything since. Have we? We haven't heard anything since. Um, so all of these things are, are causing the perfect storm. And then, of course, uh, while we're having this Liz Truss, Rushi sort of countdown, Boris is over in the UK and giving away even more of our money, billions of our money, um, so that we uh, go down the pan even quicker than we would have done. So all of these things, again, mean we're spending lots and lots of money that we haven't got. 
We haven't got it. They've been printing money so fast. And, of course, at some stage, you, there's payback time. Um, you know, so we're, we're now seeing price rises. We're, we're seeing all of these things coming together. And so it won't be, be long before we have a really big financial problem. And that will be when they take the banks down. Because that will be their optimum for starting afresh and bringing in what they want to, to bring in. There are so many ifs and maybes about this that you've got to keep your eye on what's going on because it, it is coming. And of course, the Bible talks in the book of Revelation uh, that when the tribulation begins, millions are going to die. Millions are going to die uh, through the war and the famines and that which we'll look at in a little while. Um, the world is going to be a terrible place. The world is going to be a place you don't want to be there. But it's all coming together like pieces of a jigsaw. And we're only waiting now for the final piece to be put in, for the jigsaw to be complete. And to my mind, there is only one way to be kept through what is to come. Regardless of what your stand is on the rapture, there's only one way to be kept. And that is through trusting in Christ for your salvation. If you think you can do it another way, if you think you're big enough to get through seven years of tribulation, you're going to be in the minority. <laughs> uh, and then what do you do at the end of it as well? You know, you, you've still got to come before a God who is pouring out his wrath. You've got to come before the King of kings and Lord of lords. There is only one way to get that through this, and that is through trusting in Jesus Christ as your Lord and Saviour. And I want to ask you this morning, do you know him as your personal Lord and Saviour? He is the Messiah that was expected. He is the one who died upon that cross. He is the one, the only one, who can pay the price and has paid the price for our sins. And only in him uh, can, we, can we trust and know that he will keep us.